This is Joel Robinson from ArtPusher.net, and you're listening to The Tim and Harley Show. Welcome to The Tim and Harley Show. Thank you for listening to the Tim O and Harley Show. I am Tim O. Over there is my partner in mind crime, Mr. Ben Harley. Say hello, Harley. What is happening, people? Ben, Mount St. Helens Harley. That's me. Yeah, you know what, Tim Ready to blow. Now, now Tim O, this, oh, yeah, this is how long I've been a Bigfoot fan, right? All right. I remember my brother telling me when Mount St. Helens went off, he even told me that, hey, Ben, I've heard <laughs> Bigfoots mm-hmm. are heading this way because they've been displaced. I heard from, that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That they were displaced from yes. uh, Mount, and it could have been. You know? Right. Now, you know what? There might be some buried. Yes, yeah, that yeah, really was right. something that was said. Now, your brother was probably trying to say they were coming to you and they're going to look in your yeah, windows yeah. at night. You know? <laughs> right, exactly. I think he might have been. Right, right. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, in the space time continuum, as we always talk about, we record this show a week ahead. We would like we're to. We're always lost in space. That's right. We would like in time <laughs> and space, yes. We'd <laughs> yes, like right. to say Happy New Year and. Uh, and welcome back to our deep thinkers, our audience of deep 20, thinkers. 20. But I'm still watching Rudolph's Shiny New Year, so we did watch yeah, that. Yeah, that's uh, a good one. On, on Eon. New Year's, actually. That's or kind Eon? of a tradition. It's Eon. It's Eon. Eon. Yeah, Eon. Eon, the, the, Eon terrible. the Terrible, yes. Yes, so, my uh, good friend uh, there, uh, Frank Orshin. Yes. There's a lot of uh, Paul Fries, uh in that yeah. show, too. So yeah. you know I like Paul Fries. Like me some Paul Fries. So, uh yeah. Uh, um, that's a good one. Yeah. Good one. Oh, yeah. We were watching that too. Uh, uh, Sydney's really been kind of getting into it for the first year. Mm-hmm. Uh, she really likes Rudolph and she liked that one a lot. So. Yeah. Well, any kind yeah. of like like drug induced puppetry like that's always going to be good for kids. So, I mean, uh, it's good yeah. for me. I liked it. I still like it. You get me? Now I'm just drug induced yeah. as well when I'm watching it. Well, we got that because so we got that going on uh, again in the space yes, time continuum. Illinois officially now, as I'm sitting here, is a legal yeah. marijuana state, legal cannabis state. Hooray! There Hooray. was. Okay, <laughs> I think I mentioned before that uh, Angie was going to a dispensary uh, for treatments on cancer. Now, yes. and I'm not. I'm not just saying this because I'm on air or whatever, but. She's not a she's not a pot smoker. She does not right. like THC. Nope. Does not like being high. She likes to have some wine and she likes beer. That's pretty yes. much. She's old fashioned. You know, yeah. Big red and Bud Light. You know. So. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, <laughs> but her dispensary when she was going for her medicine is the only place yeah. in the bi state area that has a license so far to sell uh, recreational. So that means yeah. St. Louis is coming over here. To buy their weed now, and the first Uh-oh. day there was a thousand people in line at all times. They have food trucks. They have food trucks in the parking lot of the dispensary for people that are waiting in line to buy marijuana. Do you think that anyone donut, else, donut, uh, <laughs> any other politician, <laughs> President Trump, anybody, yeah. look at this and see the money that is now being diverted away from your guy? Into, guy, yep. into the state's coffers that could be like yes. everywhere just like you the, what, what, what did, did we call them sin taxes right like then yes. call them syntax like beer and cigarettes and yeah. stuff so yep. so syntax. here's a great syntax that i mean they're getting away with murder when it comes mm-hmm. to taxing this shit right now you basically get a yeah. percentage point for a for a thc percentage point so if you're if your weed has 35 percent thc you're spending 35 percent taxes so that's how okay. it's so and, and they're going to get away with this for a while. So, oh, yeah. uh, you know, President Trump, uh, Ohio, who's your is, is yes. Kasich still up there in Ohio? Yes. OK, yeah. so so John, I know John Kasich. I know yeah, you're a straight laced yeah. kind of guy, but, you know, <laughs> straight laced guys like money. Uh, you yes, know, they do. I'm sure even if Ohio's doing OK, they could yeah, everybody could use more money. Right. So. Well, I think the reason, too, that uh, it failed here. Originally, there was a monopoly problem there, wasn't there? Yes, yeah, it, it, it was the actually the weed people were the ones saying don't do it, right? Because it, yeah, it was just too much. And I, I'm pretty sure the next time it comes around, it'll be it, it, they have changed it mm-hmm. to you know a little bit more not so much in the government's favor, as mm-hmm. I think was what they were trying right. this last time. So, well, you know, because I tell you what, I know a lot of people that are going up to Michigan already. Oh, absolutely, I know a lot of people that have the car that are going up there, my yeah. neighbor. 
uh, you know, I, a few of my friends and it's, you know, um, and, and Tim, I'm going to tell you, the stigma is really coming off of this stuff. Now, the other day I had a gentleman that comes in that I, I purchase a ad in where my high school, where I went to high school, they put uh-huh. out a, a calendar of right, all sure, the sports right. and, yep. and all that. And I'm a sponsor. So right. I buy every year. I'm one of the sponsors. And, um, the gentleman that comes in is, does not look like he tokes on the Mary Jane right. very much, gotcha. if ever at all. Right. He's a, he's a nice guy, but he looks like a bookworm. Okay. Sure, sure. But he came in the other day and we were talking about my knee and he said, yeah, Ben, I've been trying to CBD stuff lately. And mm-hmm. I said, oh no, I, I, you're preaching to the choir. I said, no, I have as well. And he said, I love it, you know, and, and then my wife uses it and, and, and stuff like that. So it is starting to become a lot. The stigma is coming off of it, which is the, right. for me is the best thing because that's the only thing that holds it back to the masses is that there's so many people that still have that stigma about it. Now, right. some don't really don't, you know, right. but uh, I think that's the one thing that's, and, and I'm still of the, <laughs> I'm not going to be walking down the street, blowing it in people's face. I'm sorry. Well, I'm that's, 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 yeah, that's rude. That's not right. me. Right. And, but I wouldn't do that if I was a cigarette either. Exactly. So if I exactly. smoking cigarettes. So, yes. um, but, uh, but still, yeah, I think things are really starting in, in the, the, the positives of just the medicinal, uh, attributes of of marijuana right. or there's, THC there's or that's THC. I mean of 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 the marijuana. I mean right. it's just and hemp. Because yes. CBD is yeah. a lot. Um, hemp is a lot of CBD. Yeah. And then the thing is this is that I I said earlier that Angie O is not. She's not a hippie. She's not a pot smoker. No. She no. and it's not because she's against it. I mean she has a card and uses it at night when she goes to sleep. So she sleeps yeah. through it, but she wakes up feeling yes. fine because there's no side effects. There's no right. The side effect yeah. is euphoria. Okay, but for some people, marijuana is not euphoria. For some people, no. being high is not their thing, man. They don't like it. No. The thing is, yeah. is that there's only one way for pot to get you high, and that's to yeah. cook it, to heat it. If you don't yes. heat it, it's not activated. But there's a yeah. lot of other things in hemp and marijuana, like CBD, THCA, which I take. Yeah. Because yes. it's good for my pain. I take CBD and, and THCA. Okay, yes. so what I do is I have this stuff. It's called like shatter or something. It's this, it's the stuff like the, man, the hardcore people use get high. It's like crystals. It looks like crack almost. All right, yeah. so it's like crystallized. And then you're supposed to, I guess, smoke it or something. Or, you know, you put it in like one of those uh, wax pens or something. It's supposed to blow yeah. your mind. I eat it. Yeah, I put a little bit of my finger and I eat it. it. Doesn't give me high at all because it isn't heated. I didn't heat it, but right. I eat it, not heat it. I eat it. I actually, and that is where I get some what, of my what? THCA. <laughs> and you can also buy little yeah. THCA droppers. There's also CBDA and C. And there's a lot. They are discovering things every day about this plant. Yeah. Okay, and and you know, I was at a I was at a family Christmas with my more um, conservative side, my dad's side of the family. And sure. my uncle was asking my other uncle, who's a physical therapist, what do you think about stem cell therapy? And my uncle, who was a therapist, said, try it. Go for it. Do it. And yeah. I said, did you ever try CBD? He said, no, but I've been told that to myself. Now, my uncle is an accountant, so he is not exactly a hippie. And he said, you know, he said, no, but I've heard about this. I thought about it. And I discussed it with him. And I told him an Angie story. I said, because Angie's not, she doesn't. I admittedly have always liked this stuff for a long time. Sure. I, I'm yeah. I'm for it. I learned a lot about it, though. You know, too. Yeah. That's not just a hey, man, get your stuff high and stuff. Get you know, but I started stone, talking bro. to him, and I and I and I looked at him. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I said, so so what if it gets you a little high? What are you drinking right now? Yeah, that's why I said. Yep. I was, so what? I go. Aren't we all adults here? So it gets you a little yeah. a little a little euphoric. What's wrong with that? I mean, that would me would be one of the benefits of it, you know? I mean, people are getting fucked up on all these pain pills and shit. It's like, man, I mean, this stuff at least doesn't have those kinds of side effects to it. Will you get, quote, addicted to it? Brother, I am addicted to Cheez-Its. Yeah, yeah, I'm (laughs) I'm addicted to... I had a, a long bout with sweet tarts, Tim. It, it, was, it started when I was young. That's a rough one. Was, you know, you got to go to a clinic really for that was. one. No, I'm telling you. And it's still, you know, I'll always be a sweet tart head. You know, I will. I yeah. Guess, I will. Well, popcorn too. Now you got a popcorn you know, thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, now my teeth don't are not quite as happy. Well, they don't like popcorn either. either so <laughs> no, uh, uh-uh. so, but you know what? There it is. So, right, but, right. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that I'm, I'm, I'm glad that the that the uh, uh, the attitudes are changing. I know yeah. both of us have had um, times are changing. We both of us have had some pretty rough experiences um, with uh, <sighs> entities who did not think so. At one point, yes. let's just put it that way. We've yeah. both gotten mm-hmm. in trouble with this stuff a little bit. And you kind of look at these people getting in trouble like, come on, man. I mean, yeah. but, you know, I'm glad that we're finally, we're getting there. We're getting there. It's yes. good because, you know, they're getting, they're getting high parts where everybody's worried about it. It's like, but I'm going to tell you something. I am tired of every time somebody's having fun or every time somebody looks like that something might make them feel good, everybody has to ban the shit. Yeah. Everybody has to worry about why yeah. it's bad for you and ban it, ban it. You know, it's like, yeah. and then they'll go and they'll drink their fifth Pleasure, whiskey. Pleasure, please, Timo. Yes. Yeah, yeah yep. exactly. Exactly. It's like, let it go. People, yep. you know, it's just like uh, you play contact sports. Your brain might be soup later in life, but you got paid for mm-hmm. it and you knew that. Yes. I mean, let people in. make their own mistakes. Let people do this. It's really mm-hmm. like... Oh, man, and I'm just, I mean, I don't, uh, but anyway, so I'm very, very glad, and uh, I think the state raised in one day $3.2 million. Wow. One day, and we broke records, yeah. Wow. Yeah, we're going to run yeah. out of stuff here soon. We're going to run be running out of, I'm going to be driving in the middle of Illinois to get, to buy, <laughs> <laughs> to buy my first <laughs> marijuana cigarette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going yeah. to do that, you know, so, but to, anyway, very good. I'm glad at that. So, unfortunately, they also raised the gas tax another 15 cents, and that's Illinois for you. That's yeah. why Illinois is the state that has the most people leaving. And you wonder why they're raising taxes because everybody's leaving. It's like, well, stop raising taxes, give people, people tax credits leave, yeah. and incentives, and maybe they'll move they'll in. Stick around, yes, because yeah. I think Colorado would tell you, hey, if you keep shit under control, people like living in a state where marijuana is legal. Yes, they really yeah. like it. You'll get people moving yeah. there. You'll get a lot of tourism. You get a lot of this and that. Which I'm hoping, Mr. Ben Harley, maybe. I like my <laughs> state. Yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. I like my state. I don't like my state's politics. Well, but I like the people no. in my state. Um, politics to me doesn't equal people. I don't. I don't judge my friends on who they vote for and stuff. But I'm just saying no. that I hey, think no. need to get a little need to get things under control here. Hopefully this will help. Hopefully this will help. Yes. Uh, let's see. But spend a few things I watched this week. Yeah. Uh, let's see. First, Play it on me. first stuff for 2020. Excited about this from 1982. Watch Deadly Ooh. Eyes from That's Canada. That's the, the rat one, right? That's the rat man with Scatman yeah. Crothers in it. Yeah. yeah. Room. So I uh, don't know why I pulled it out except for I was just scanning my movies and we were looking for something to turn our yeah. brains we off. We reviewed that, right? Yes, we, we did. That, yeah. 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 Angie wanted to turn yeah. the brains off and I'm all for that. And Deadly Eyes. And so you went for, yes. <laughs> you went for a rat movie. <laughs> right. Certainly not going to uh, cause <laughs> your brain to be And any chairs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, 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 right. the evening, right? Okay. Right, good. Yeah. Uh, let's see here from 1979, Mr. Ben Harrell, you're going to like this. From oh, 19- that's a fine year. It is. Love 79. From 1979, we invested quite a bit of time and watched yes. Salem's Lot. Ooh, okay. Yes. Face the master. That's that right? part. I'm telling you, that part, I've never seen Mason go overboard like yeah. that before. That is just mm-hmm. uncomfortable and awkward, that, that scene. Mm-hmm. But yes. Face the master. Yeah. His That's right. Uh, your your yes. faith versus his face. His faith. Okay. Come on. Face the master. Yes. The so. master comes in and does the old double head bonk like, like yes. uh, Hulk Hogan. Man. Oh, yeah. Boom with the parents, man. Yeah, he does. Yep. I like that. I tell you what, though, that part, and I know I said this before, when he flash, it comes smashing through the window and it's just like a pile of clothes or. or or whatever on the floor. Not pile clothes, but there's like a... Yeah, that's what it looks like. Whatever, a black mass yeah. sitting there on the floor, and then it just rides. Dude, that to me is one of the best parts in horror ever. Mm-hmm. Because it's one of those things where it's like, and you know how I am, Tim. Like, you're like, what is that? Wait right. a second, what is that? Oh, now it's moving, and then now it jumps up, and, and that's still to me one of the best... I love that vampire. It's, it's not what you're my expecting favorites. to see. Oh, God, no. You know? It's like the and bat I'm whispers, like, right? Like that yeah, moment in the yeah. bat whispers where they kind of comes running towards you like, what, what is yeah. that? What is that? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah, goofy it's guy like, in an old I, cheesy costume, but you, yeah. it's, hard to, it's hard to focus on until he's right yes. on top of you. And I like that. That to mm-hmm. me is just uh, uh, and, uh, is like one of my favorite parts of any horror movie. Uh, I just love it. It's just that part. I mean, it, it's, 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 it's simple, but so effective. I was six or seven when that aired, so that puts you like at nine or ten or something. Was there was there any kid who came into school because that was a mini series on CBS? So was there any kid 
who didn't look really tired the next day at school because they couldn't sleep thinking that one of their buddies was going to float up in a fog in their window (laughs) and start scratching at it, even if they were on the first floor somewhere. I mean, that was those scenes, those vampires. That's a good vampire movie. Yes. That is uh, that's one of my last favorite vampire movies. Right. It really is. It is. I love Let's it. Let's see here. A couple more, Miss Ben Harley, from 1959. Yeah. Watch Ooh, okay. The Angry Red Planet. Ooh, yeah. Angry starring Planet. Les Tremaine. <laughs> Was that on Prime, bud? Or? Uh, yes, it is on Prime yeah. and is yep. also yeah, directed by our pal Sid Reptilicus Pink. <laughs> Sydney Pink. We just watched the Sydney Pink. We did. Pink. That was Reptilicus. Yep. Yep. Reptilicus. Yeah. yeah. Sydney Pink. So, uh, Angry Red Planet <laughs> is better than Reptilicus, but man, it's kind of like it's got everything you really want, but they find a way to kind of make it slow and clunky. Uh, I mean, man, no, Ed, they got no a fun. full of <laughs> full no of fun. stuff. Well, it's worth checking out. Look at it. Yeah, watch yeah. it because mm-hmm. it's a good one for you to watch while you're printing. Real sure. good one. Okay. You're not going to yeah. miss much when you're. You're got your knee Dip deep in, in your shirt. Yeah, you're not <laughs> yeah, gonna miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can come yeah. in and out of it. It's pretty easy. So uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so I had a good time watching that. Uh, let's see here. Also, real quick. Also on Amazon Prime yeah. from 2010. I went back and watched one of. I don't want to call them one of my favorite documentaries, but a documentary that I enjoy watching. Okay. Uh, I watched Best Worst Movie, which is the oh, documentary yeah. about Troll Two. And the people yeah. who like Troll 2. I don't two. think I've watched it, though. I need you to need watch to see it. I, it is I on came Prime. across it like and seen it on there. It is on Prime. Time. You yeah. need to watch yep. it. You would really okay. enjoy it. You would really, yeah, I'm really. Sure I would. I told Angie, I said, every time I watch this movie, it always makes me nervous. She's like, why? I was like, because there's those hack movies out there. And Troll 2 <laughs> ain't no better or worse than a hack movie. Right. And I said, they're, it's going to come back someday. You watch. I go, I will be signing autographs someday as Tony or something. You know, one of these yeah. shows. I promise gay you. Ranger with a gay ranger shirt. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Last up here, Mr. Ben Harley. Uh, and we've been no. talking about this pretty much every week. We were yes, sir. we were some of the people that were sp- that were spouting off, telling people that they should really check out Expedition Bigfoot. Yes. That we were told on the Travel Channel that we were told we were that told. this was the show that we should watch. It should satisfy some of our um, irritable uh, criticisms, syndrome, critiques about- <laughs> yeah. of other shows and stuff. Yeah. And and so far, I've I've been a little hard on it. I, yeah. I, I, and that's what I do. That's what we do that's here. And, no, and, that's yeah. Um, I've been more hard on the show, how it's been put together and stuff like that. So yeah. now I am up to speed in the space-time continuum. I believe it is five episodes. If you're listening to this, also following Expedition Bigfoot, where we are in time while I'm sitting here is the fifth episode. I do believe uh, is the last one that's been out now. Okay. So I had to watch a few of them. So here, here, here's a couple things. So the one guy got the headache, right? Now the one guy yeah. that they were blaming the Bigfoot frequencies on with the headache. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So, so he's gone, he's in the hospital. It's, you know, he's getting tended to or whatever. So, you know, I look to be frank with you. I mean, when someone gets altitude sickness, blaming it on Bigfoot's a stretch. Okay. So, sure. and then that's really, I think what's going on here. But anyways, so, so enter Ronnie LeBlanc. Now I know this guy's name. I knew it right away because uh, our good friend in front of the show, uh, Jeff Byers from Creature Replica yes, is friends with this guy. I've heard him talk yeah. about him when I've interviewed uh, Jeff before. He has, Jeff, he has yeah. spoken about Ronnie LeBlanc before, like they're, they're pals. So, okay. Yeah. So we got a guy in here that I don't know personally, but a friend of a friend. All right. That's, that, sure. that's in yeah. there. Um, I, I immediately was more comfortable with it. Although he lo- he has a, a vague, like I'm related to moneymaker look. He don't oh, act really? like him at all, though. He don't act like him. And I don't mean to offend him. I don't. That, yeah. He looks like a handsome brother. Okay, we'll put it that way. <laughs> oh, we'll, wow. We'll put it yeah. that way. So, um, okay, so where we're at now is a few things. So here, here's, here's the, let's go with the positive stuff. Okay. okay here's the positive stuff. The positive stuff is that uh, they have, uh, they get an audio. They get a sound, like a, a roar okay. type of thing. They actually send it to an audio engineer. Who okay. analyzes it? I liked this part, of course. Sure, of course, yeah. I like this part. He's working with the same equipment that I You're work. An engineer, with. yeah. So <laughs> he's working with the same equipment I work with. I know what he's doing. I know exactly what he's doing. I'm looking at what he's doing. Okay, fine. So he's analyzing these frequencies, all right. And what's interesting about it is that he, these guys look. There's good and bad about what I'm going to talk about here. They are yeah. hung up on this infrasound stuff. Okay, right? these guys are hung up on the the frequency shit, basically. But it's for sound, uh-huh. all right. So. Basically, they explain it better what what they're into. Okay, so 
the human ear, all right, goes from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So when okay. you get full range speakers, if you ever look at the back of your speaker, stereo speakers, it'll say like 20 HZ to 20 K. Okay. That's, that's the full range. That's the range of human hearing. So when you have a dog okay. whistle blow, it's going over 20 K. So you can't hear it, but the dog can hear it because it can hear past yeah. a human. Okay. So there you go. So that's a simple way of putting it. Now, infrasound animals in nature can make a sound, uh, uh, basically a growl that goes under 20 Hertz. That you can't really? hear, but it makes your senses go, ooh, ooh, oh, shit. Like you yeah, sense well, yeah. something. You can't hear, but you can feel it. But you can feel it, yeah. Right, basically. Like a tiger okay. or something. Sure. Actually, they went, they went and had a tiger growl at them, and they were a little overdoing it. But they were like, wow, yeah. did you feel that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, wow. Well, I'd believe that, yeah, because if there's a yeah. if there's a, a, a apex predator six inches away from you growling in your face, I'm a little nervous myself. Me too. I get that, yeah. you know. So okay, but I'm I, I am buying into what they're saying. Well, I'm buying in what the, I'm buying right, into yeah. what they're saying. Now, sure. Would this infrasound make you ill? Now that that mm. that I'm not. I'm sorry. No, that, that yeah. I'm not. I'm not there. I'm not saying you're yeah. wrong. I'm saying you're putting the cart in front of the horse again. I'm not there. You haven't even showed me anything yet, and you're telling me sure. about how sounds under 20k or under 20 hertz. Are going to cause me to have a headache in that situation, out sure. out okay. there in that, not in a room with them blowing at me. I mean, in that situation. So sure. I'm not on board. What I am on board with was when they analyzed the howl. The howl okay. did have under 20 hertz sounds really? or frequencies. Okay. Yes. So whatever yeah. made the howl indeed did have uh, infrasonic frequencies. So that's okay. interesting. I like that. That yeah. was the first yeah. time I'm like, ah, here's the other very interesting thing. They had this new little doohickey, I'm going to call it. Okay. A doohickey, yeah. Where if they find a footprint, they can put it into a 3D scanner. And I do believe they can put it, uh, they can use that for a 3D printer. So you yeah. no longer have to put the, you no longer have to have to put the, the plaster down. Really? I, and they sent this to Meldrum. Like something with that. And I was fascinated by that, too. That was very cool. I was like, oh, yeah. wow, that's neat. Yeah. And Meldrum looked at it and said, well, it could be a bear or it could be a Bigfoot. He's like, if I had some, a little more evidence, it would tip the scale one way or the other. So, again, sure. being honest, appreciate sure. that. I appreciate yeah. that. Okay. Um, but but here's here's the thing. Uh, that Russ Acord, the guy, the Tarzan yeah. who's out there, he starts feeling bad. Uh-oh. And they don't overdo it. But they imply it could be Bigfoot again. I'm like, you guys are up in the fucking mm. mountains, man. And Angie yeah, was starting to get Angie was starting to get like, okay, okay. And I said, well, all sorts of stuff up there that can make you sick too. Like just getting sick in general. But but if one guy's sick, maybe he got you sick too. The yeah. other thing is the, the the thing I had I told Angie, I said, see, Angie, this is a problem. I don't know if this is the, the show editors. Yeah. Who maybe Russ said well, it could be that, or I could, I could be out of breath because we're up in the in the altitude. Well, yeah. He ought to know that. Sure, survival. No, and I can't yeah. believe he doesn't know it. But they're edit. I, I I said maybe they edited it out. I don't know. This sure. is the problem I have with these shows. This is why yeah. I think if if we're, if we're just gonna have to do this ourselves, basically yeah. at some point, because I don't buy any of this stuff. And it's not that I'm, yeah. it's not that I'm accusing any of these people in Ex- Expedition Bigfoot for hoaxing anything or for trying to do sure. something. I'm kind of more accusing the um, the editors and the show producers and stuff. Okay, yeah. which is eh, it's, but that's almost like a shortcut. But it, it, it's true. It's true. I think they're <laughs> over focused on these frequency things. And here's something else. All right, now last last week we talked about the guy who took the hair and got sick, and then he took it back and got better. Right, okay, yeah. so and he attributed that to supernatural things with Bigfoot. Okay, and sure. I brought up the point. Well, what if it's a fungus? Mm-hmm. You know, what if it's something else? Did you ever think about that? What if the Bigfoot itself has a, has a fungus that grows in its fur that's that's al- it's an allergen to humans? What if yeah. they excrete a, a hormone or something that's bad? Yeah. I mean, they apparently they stink to high heaven. Okay, yeah, and, and if they, that that could be, I mean, right? Uh, yeah, go on. So here's yeah, a couple sure. questions I had, and this yeah. is what bothers me. What bothers me is this. That I have these questions, and I'm not seeing these questions. This is this is where people are being mistaken when they're telling me to watch a show. Yes, because if you're telling me to watch a show, I better not have a question that's not answered. That's a pretty legit question, okay? Yeah. So that's what yes. I came up with last week. Was where, where, why didn't anybody ever think about this? So here's the other thing. 
So if you're telling me that a Bigfoot projects below 20 hertz. Yeah. Okay. Why yeah. would you ever do a call yourself? Or why would you would even shoot it. one? Why would you even shoot one recorded into the woods on a full range speaker that doesn't go below 20 hertz? Right. That don't make sense. Yeah. Wouldn't like, the Bigfoot immediately know you're, it's a fake if he doesn't, yeah. if he doesn't sense the under 20 yeah. hertz? Right. Yeah. I mean, it definitely would. I mean, it, or, or wouldn't even respond to it. Like, right. Wouldn't. Yeah. Not at all. Now, I, I will say one thing. What I'm seeing now is a little bit better than what I was yeah. seeing before. And I, I stick with what I say that I think that they went out there for a period of time, which you appreciate a couple of weeks. Yes. Yeah. They had, to, they had a camera crew with them. Uh, they, they're, they're not making, they're not trying to act like they don't have camera guys with them. Uh, sometimes a camera guy will actually make a comment like, holy crap, what was that? And they'll yeah. actually have a little, you know, uh, s- subtitles to make sure you heard what the camera guy said, you know, and stuff. So, so they're, they're not, they're not saying that there isn't camera people and stuff yeah. like that, you know? So I do, I do appreciate that, you know, as well. But I, I kind of think that some of this stuff, and, and may, maybe, I don't know, maybe they're just not thinking about these things. Yeah, um, no. They might not be, buddy. You know? So far, I'm, I'm st- I, I think I see where they're going. I still think they got some good thermal. They still got some thermal, a good thermal image. I still sure. think that that's where, what we're heading toward. And I still think I that, so. that it, this is being drawn out for people entertained by this. Um, I'm not that entertained by it. I, I, I'm I, not. I, I, I want I'm, the, I'm entertained it, by the truth. I am over it. Like mm. so far over it. But that it's. I mean, it's uh, kind of makes me nauseous. I really am. I'm just. I don't. I, well, that's my infrasound frequencies coming at you. That's why. You're yeah. Nauseous. That. Well, that too. Well, I'm sure Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah. Might be. Every time I turn on one of the shows, he might be trying to you know, persuade me from right, watching right. and, or, you know, so uh, right. yeah, he might be throwing his frequencies at me too. So. Yeah. Well, here's, here's something yeah. that's, there, here's something that's kind of nice. And, and I, I was glad yeah. to see this. And I told Angio that you're a big fan of this. And I think that you would be glad, by the way, if you do want to see this show, you can watch it for free. If you just get the, the travel channel app. Okay. It's free. Just, just go okay, on yeah. your, just go on your phone and go to your app store and get the travel channel app and you can watch episodes of it. So you can watch it on your iPad, Go to the go okay. to the, the iTunes store, or whatever you go, the App Store, and then you can get Travel Channel. That's how I used to watch uh, Mountain Monsters when we used to have fun with that show. Okay, when I, right, whenever cool. I got rid of the satellite. So there's that. But anyway, to get okay. back to what I was going to talk about, they had they spent a lot of time talking about the Marble Ridge. Did they? Uh, a video. They showed it. Yeah. Uh, and that was a youth Marble ministry. Mountain or whatever. Marble. Yeah. Well, they call it Marble Ridge, Marble Mountain, whatever. Yeah. Either way, yes, yes, that one. That was a youth ministry. Yeah, that was mm-hmm. uh, up in the mountains, and they were actually doing other things, and happened to see that and just take footage of it. They they found like a nest they thought first, like they, a yeah. Well, and then and then from there they were looking up, and that's when they saw mm-hmm. this creature. Which mm-hmm. I man, I don't know how you'd fake that one either. And if you did, that's a good one, and mm-hmm. I think it's huge. Whatever that was is m- huge. Mm-hmm. Well, so, uh, but, you'll be glad to know they actually talked to. The person in that video who points, the okay. kid who points, says, kid, what is yeah. that? Like up there, like they actually yeah. found him. They're still doing ministry work and stuff, but they found him and they talked to him about, about that. What and, did he, what? I mean, it was good. I'm not going to, I can't really regurgitate everything he said. You know, you sure. watch oh, these shows okay. yeah. and you're like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. But it had more to do with the fact that I was glad to see him on there. That was something yeah. that I thought was, was good. Did he think it was a big foot or? Yeah, you know, he thought it was something odd. He he did. He said yeah. because when they, when you were looking at, it, he said you know the, the hands were below the knees. There's a lot of weird things, and it was just going across way far yeah. out there. You know, um, and I mean, it, it, at the top of that ridge, when you see it come walking down, it looks like a giant. Mm-hmm. It does. I mean, it looks like a giant. Like now, you know me in perspective. I'm really really weird about that stuff. And when I look at that, I'm like, this thing is a giant. I know. I think didn't. I maybe I think the. Finding Bigfoot or somebody went up there and did that something, and whatever they did that had the person or whatever walked down wasn't even close to the height, right? At all, not even close to the right. height of what that thing was. It didn't look nothing like it. It looked like a regular person walking, mm-hmm. you know. But that thing, I blew my mind, and still to me is one of my. I don't know. I, I, I there's not many of those that I I look at anymore. But that's one that I can have a hard time saying what that is. Mm-hmm. 
I can't say it's a Bigfoot. It's too far away. But whatever it is, is not normal. And it's not a, I don't think it's a human being. If it is, it's, it's Elegante, that wrestler from back in the day, plus two feet. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it's, it's a giant. It really, that's what it looks like. I'm glad they showed that one because that's a good one. I, I mean, I think that is a very important footage. I really think it's very important mm-hmm. footage in the last 10 years or whatever, or, you know. Right. Well, I was glad because I wanted to hear yeah. someone who was there. Yes. I've seen the footage yeah. before. I don't think I've ever seen someone or talked to someone or heard someone talk who was actually yeah. there that I'm aware of. I don't remember that. Yeah. So, okay. So I said I had a couple problems and one of them was, uh, okay, so if, if, if this creature projects sounds that are below 20 Hertz, then wouldn't it know immediately if you're screaming in the woods, it's a human, not another Bigfoot. Like right, I mean, yes. right away, they would know that right should away. be a calling card. That should be yes. a, a, a confirmation of what they're hearing. These are not dumb animals. If they are, we would no. already know they're around. Okay. So here's the other thing. If I'm going to tell you that the smell of Bigfoot's really bad and maybe it even excretes a, a hormone or maybe it gets a fungus growing on that could be sick to humans, yeah. do you think a Bigfoot can't smell you? Oh, for, if for you miles, smell it's... so bad to a Bigfoot, what do you think you smell like to it? Yeah, and especially too, Timo. Like, all right, now, I know when you're up there, you might not be wearing your best perfume. You might not be, but <laughs> which would but be you're worse probably going to be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But you might be wearing some some speed stick, which I would hope, you know, or some deodorant and stuff like that. And I'm sure some of those smells are very odd to an animal mm-hmm. and probably carry a long ways as well. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I just think we probably smell weird or sweet or some kind of something to them. You know what I mean? We'd have to. And That'd be awful. You're, you're, yeah. And you're talking also about a animal who survives and thrives on the changing of the weather, the the elements and and everything in the woods. So you're not gonna come in there and and surprise them, I don't think. Very often. Well and if ever, right. you know, like and to, to your point I just don't think so. Right. To your point, the 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 woman in the, the group, yeah. she's an anthropologist yeah. and she said that she has been two feet away from gorillas and didn't know it out out in the woods. And she said yeah. that 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 you to your point that that they know we're here. She almost sounded like you talking. She said yeah. they know we're here way before anything. They've known we're here, but she did yeah. say the reason we're staying here for two weeks. To my point, to my yeah. point about living here and seeing different things. Yes, she did say that animals get used to your presence. They yes. they they come to accept your presence once no yes. harm has come to them, and then they at might that get point, to you. Th- at that point, yep. they might at least stay around and watch you, even if you don't know they're See what's there. Going on. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so I think we when I talk about for them, I really do. well, yeah, absolutely, we and we and they are for us. That's what we're out there looking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I really enjoyed parts of these episodes more than the first couple of episodes. Sure. I think my point is that anybody doing these shows is going to be at a, at a supreme disadvantage. I kind of feel like some of the people who are in the shows kind of know yeah. that in a way, but yeah. it's pretty seductive. I mean, if somebody came up to us and said, hey, uh, we're producing a show for History Channel and yeah. we've heard your podcast and we know you guys are kind of like skeptical enthusiasts and we want to have people out there that are more skeptical than roasted in glasses – would you sure. do this? We would do it. Yep. I'd do yep. it. I'd, sure, oh, sure, sure. By the time that goddamn show came out, who knows what it would look like? Exactly. I mean, who knows yes. what, what they would paint us as? Yep. And they paid us, and they and we would we would sign a contract, and somewhere in that contract, it would say, we can edit this however we want, we can paint you as however we want, you don't yep. have a say in the final edit. I yep. mean, you know, it's not unlike <laughs> making a movie for a studio. You know, they right, you don't right. have Final Cut unless you're somebody huge, like Kubrick or something like that. You know, but it, it's just I think that's kind of where I'm at with it. I I sure I stand on what I've been saying. Where this feels like a show that should have been a standalone show. They did the right things. I think the guys. I think the people in the group more or from what I can tell, I was not there. From what I can right. tell. And look, here's the thing. I've been not homering for the show, but I've been kind of wanting it to be something that so far yeah. has not been. I can't. And it's frustrating to me because I can't come out here and tell you people, oh, this is great. It's not like you're not going to see it. Yeah. Yeah. I can't. I, one thing we don't do, Harley, is we don't lie to the audience. No. Uh-uh. We just don't say anything sometimes. 
You know what I mean? Like sometimes instead of lying, like if there's something we don't want, we just don't say anything, but I can't lie to the audience and tell them this stuff. I mean, it's just, it's stupid. It's not, I mean, why would anybody want to listen to people that are just homering for things or lying about things? I mean, you got politics for that. Yeah, you don't, sure. you, don't, you don't need you us. That down. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need us for that, you know. So I'm just saying is honestly, I think that the people, from my estimation, did the the rightest thing they could do, given the opportunity they had. So, yes. so that's kind of where, I, and I still think that they probably have some pretty good thermal stuff because they keep teasing it. They've been teasing it since the very first second of the first episode. Sure. I think this would have come off better had it had been a two hour event. Okay. Maybe you yeah. spring load that or spring spring load. Maybe you spring board <laughs> that into two a series. Show. Yeah. Uh but I, I I honestly think that it would have been better, but you can't sell as many commercials for a two hour event as you can for something strung along week after week after week. After. Sure. I don't know, but that's where I'm at with the show. I, I'm going to keep doing this because again, I stepped my foot in it. We, and yeah. said, watch the show. <laughs> so now I'm going to watch it up until a point. I'm going to watch up until sure. I see that thermal footage, whatever they're saying. And then we'll have a long discussion. The positive is this. I did enjoy this episode a little bit better. And some of the science, was interesting to me. It was okay. a little over drawn out, a little over explained, kind of like we do on the show here a lot. But it, <laughs> yeah. it was better. It was okay, good. better. It was, I was intrigued by some of it. I liked the audio. I liked the further explanation of the audio frequencies. I don't agree with their assessment mm-hmm. at all. I know a lot about sure. sound, and sound is an amazing yeah. thing. Sound can cure diseases. I sound don't. Can- throw you for a loop it can do such it weird stuff it. Yes. It, 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 exactly yes i understand and, uh, that i i'm just not there yet with this i think they're yeah they're i don't know why unless there's something coming up that they're setting us up for sure with the sound that's all i'm telling you either that or maybe they're trying to explain why the one guy left and the like, guy and they had to make it by bigfoot they couldn't make it something simple which this all looks like <laughs> right, simple right. stuff to me everything yeah like yeah. if you take the music if you take the the grandiose shit out of it, the production stuff out of it. It looks like they're out there in the woods looking for a Bigfoot. Okay. <laughs> but they get to throw yeah, all that stuff like, in and it, it's muddies it, the waters a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit, you know, so yeah, yeah. I, man, I don't know. I, it, it's disappointing in a way. Oh, well. well, you know what, dude, here, do this. Download the, I'm gonna try download it. I'll the, try yeah, it download yeah. the travel channel app, get caught up on it and we can discuss it and see what you think. About sure. it. I okay. think you will appreciate it and like it a lot more than Finding Bigfoot. I will say I am glad on that because we did say to watch this, and I did say that I was told by people we trust that this is going to be the show that we should watch. Well, okay. I think that that, that and I don't want to bust these people out, but I think that that person was uh, barking up the up a tree in our woods. <laughs> okay. there, it, yeah. it is definitely better. It's no mountain monsters, that's for damn sure. And it's that's certainly... It's certainly more serious than finding Bigfoot, but that's what I got for you. Do you got any Bigfoot stuff or anything else you watched? Um, or no real Bigfoot stuff, buddy. Right. But I'll try to keep this. Uh, well, it, no, no, I don't actually, my friend. I, and I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. No, I have watched. Yeah, no. Well, uh, you know, there's not even a Wookie in this episode, so I can't even um, move it in from. Are we going, the are we going into the Mandalorian here? Yes, Tim. Okay. I, I, I've come up on my Mandalorian uh, on the final episode. Um, I, I think you did tell me they rebooted or they have greenlit for the next season. So, really excited about that. I did enjoy. Um, there was like one episode out of the eight that I didn't really like a whole lot, but um, eh, you know, for the most part, I really have enjoyed this. Um, the last episode um, was pretty good. They not too many twists and turns and things like that, but um, uh, it, it sold me enough to where I, I do want to carry on and watch another uh, yeah. season. So we'll see where it goes, buddy. We will see. But staying in space, my friend. All right. Yeah, I am watching the Lost in Space that, for some odd reason, eluded me the second season. Oh, okay, okay, which yeah. is already already in the can. Uh-huh. So I had started uh, watching the the new season of Lost in Space. And um, I do remember talking with you about it before. The first season, it was okay. It wasn't mm-hmm. great. 
for me for some odd reason. I don't know. It was just good. It was good. Okay. Mm-hmm. It was, you know, uh, it, 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 it was getting better as it went along. And I do appreciate the woman Parker Posey because going in, I was not happy about them changing, you know, they got to change everything, you know, and yeah. making Dr. Smith a woman, which mm-hmm. I have nothing against women. I happen to like women a lot. Mm-hmm. Some of my favorite things on the planet. Mm-hmm. But I was a little disturbed about that. I just didn't know. But I will say she's done a bang up job. Great job. And I have no problems anymore with that. So um, I'm okay. So for the most part, I've enjoyed it. And Timo, I must say, you know, Lost in Space is one of my all time favorite shows um, because I feel I consider myself part of the Space Family Robinson. Uh huh. You know, growing up with watching that, and I mean, even before Star Wars and all that other stuff, I was a Lost in Space kid. I was a Lost in Space kid more than Star Trek kid. So mm-hmm. I do enjoy it, and I hope, I hope, Timo, I got a lot of hope that it keeps getting better. Uh-huh. So we'll report back. I will report back of any um, warnings, Timo. Like, <laughs> Let me ask you a question real like quick. Yeah. Do you, do you sure. think that maybe part of – do you feel like you had to warm up to the show? Yeah. Do you yes. feel like not – now, look, I know what you're trying to say about Dr. Smith being a woman. And basically yeah. sometimes old old cranky fellows like us, we get, yes. a, we get upset because we feel like we're being baited. Yes. Into saying we don't like women because Dr. Smith. Right. It's just like if he was black or white yes. and they switch the race on you. It's yeah. like, well, well, what if you change the girl roles into guy roles? Would that women come happens. up in arms going, that was a woman. That probably was a, would. You know. so, so, that's, so, so I understand that. So if you take that out of it, okay, let's say you take yeah. that, that out of it. Do you think yes. part of warming up to the show is the fact that it's so much slicker looking yes. – than it was than these shows were when you were a kid because I do recall yes. distinctly that the main thing when the Star Trek movies came out yes. was that it, it was so slick compared to what I saw as a quaint looking TV show yeah that yeah. it kind of was the big difference mm-hmm. it was and the it, it, major thing that could maybe stand yeah. in your way yeah well it's been hard for me because I'm a fan I love the Jupiter too it's mm-hmm. one of my favorite spaceships and there's not it's not a very fancy looking UFO or spaceship right, right. saucer, or whatever you want, mm-hmm. you know, but I love that thing. I love the sound of it. I, I just, certain things from that television show and from star Wars and, and many other things make me feel like I'm at home. Mm-hmm. It, it gives me that peace in my heart that I feel like I'm and on board and I'm, and I'm with you all the way. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So when you reboot something and things like that, it's hard for me. Like you, like you just said, it, it has taken me a minute to warm up to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I do appreciate where they're going. I feel a lot more in tune with the family and the characters now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's a lot easier to watch. And I will say Parker Posey is awesome. She is a jackass. man. Mm-hmm. She is, lives right up to, um, to the Dr. Smith Mm -hmm. because Dr. Mm -hmm. Smith is, and will always be one of my favorite characters ever. Mm -hmm. Even as smarmy as he is, it was awesome. He was this, cause he was such a coward and such a smarmy guy. And he's all, he would always Mm -hmm. trying to sell them down the road and, and except for Don and then Don and him would fight. Like he would just, I like the show. So anyways, buddy, yes, it's, it's, it's holding me. So I will report back and let you know. Uh, last but not right. least, I watched on um, Reels has had all of that stuff, you know, the real story of mm-hmm. a lot of these things. Well, they had uh, this one was about the New Jersey man eater, which is basically the shark that went up and down the coast oh. and up the creek that killed Lester. Uh, yeah, Stillwell? killed Lester Stillwell. Yep, killed poor Lester. Poor old Lester well, Stillwell. Yeah. I'm still sad I'll about Lester you. Stillwell. Oh, me too. I've me been too. sad about Lester Stillwell <laughs> for, yeah. for many episodes on this show. <laughs> I'm telling you, poor Lester still. Well, poor and now, Lester so Stilwell. this was, um, and I hadn't seen this one. Uh, it was a two hour uh, kind of like a docudrama or reenactment type thing. But they also keyed on people from this century <laughs> that had been attacked by sharks as well. So they, so say they would do a little bit about <clears throat> the true story and then they would go and talk to someone who had been attacked by a shark five years ago or something, you know. Didn't and then they, they would go back to the show. bull shark that, that got Lester well, Stillwell though? Or are they still thinking it really might have been sure a white yet. or a well, tiger? That's the thing. It's like it's 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 goes back and forth because what was neat about this episode or this show, they actually had the gentleman who wrote the book Twelve Days of Terror, right. which I own 
Mm-hmm. Um, I got the movie. It's a good book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, so it had him in there. And uh, I still, the more they talked on this one, I think they're really pushing it more towards a great white, uh, more but a baby great white. Okay. But the thing is, that story alone would be a fantastic movie. It would you could make that movie almost as scary as Jaws or just a you know. Right. Um, <laughs> but I don't know that anyone ever will. Well, I do I've have there the is a movie. There is a yeah. there is a and that was it's a it's a dramatic movie. It was made. Yeah. I've got yeah. it, but it was made for A and E or something. It was made for television. <laughs> yeah, it's, and and it's, I, I know what you're yeah. saying, something yeah, more it's theatrical. Okay. Yeah. Here's the thing, like, and um my theory on the shark is we just will never know. But course, at that right. time period, this doesn't happen to this day. <laughs> we have shark attacks a lot, but not as much as you know, you you know, Tim, you have more of a chance of getting hit by lightning. Mm-hmm. And you've been hit by lightning, Tim, all right? True. Yes. You have much more chance of being hit by lightning than being attacked by a shark, mm-hmm. period. There's, it just doesn't happen that often. And if it does, you might get eaten and never come back. So, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. But this shark was a maniac, man. And, and, and it's hard for me to think that more than one shark did all this because – this shark was so aggressive. You had Charles Van Zant, who was the first person killed. He swam out, and and that's you know, and, and there's so many things. And I hate to be like this because I love Jaws. Jaws is my shit. You know that. Mm-hmm. I will die a Jaws fan, even if I'm eaten by a shark. Mm-hmm. I'll die a Jaws fan. But there's so many things from that story that he that that um, eventually put into that movie. There's mm-hmm. so much, dude. There's so much. The dog. Pippet, all that stuff, because Charles Van Zant was playing with a dog when he swam out. The dog came back. He got attacked. Mm-hmm. They brought him back in. And when they were pulling Charles Van Zant in, the shark was still attacking him. Uh, still. And these are, you got guys out there trying to pull this man in. And this shark, and they're in like 12 inches of water, 16 inches of water. And this shark is still eating this guy, uh-huh. trying to get him. That doesn't happen to him very often. I mean, that just right there is bizarro. Because mm-hmm. most time a shark and even great whites that are 20 feet long get spooked. They don't like stuff happening to them. Mm-hmm. They'll bite you, let you die, and come back and eat you because they don't want to fight you. Mm-hmm. They're dumb. they're lazy if you really think of it. They are. Mm-hmm. But they are going to hit you, and that's how they operate. They're not going to still be chewing on you when someone's trying to pull you away. Most times they're not. They're going to think, oh, there's something's wrong. I'm gonna go. I'm out of here. And if there was, you if know? it was coming out of the water too, wouldn't they have seen yeah. it? So wouldn't they? Yes, have, they wouldn't, saw they, it. wouldn't they have been able to and, report what it was, or had they? Well, were they just not? At that, they just didn't well, know at that what point it was. They didn't know. People just didn't know what sharks they really. Not many. Sharks. Yeah. Not many had right. at this That's point. True. They thought they're like mythological creatures, mm. you know. And then they got all these stupid ass scientists. And all, oh, it was a giant turtle. It was this, and it was that. They never wanted to believe it was a shark. None of them did. Well, so that's why I'm asking if it's a white <laughs> yeah. too, because don't well, don't bull sharks have have the proclivity to uh, to, go up, to go up rivers and go into water. fresh water, yeah. right? And yeah. and whites usually don't go into fresh water. Don't. It kills them right. pretty quick, doesn't it? That's why I've gone back and forth on this throughout my history of knowing this because I don't know yet. But in this one, like they said, the second guy that got and here's the thing too. Not only did the second person, two days later, the guy attacked, his name was Charles as well. How the hell does that happen? You know what I mean? The, the, just the Charles Bruder was the second one to attack. Uh-huh. Now, he swam out and got attacked, and a lady sitting on the beach said, what's that gentleman doing out there screaming? And he's in a canoe. The guy out there in the red canoe needs help. What a red canoe. It was blood, man. Uh-huh. And so they rode out there, and the two witnesses – had grabbed him and they're like, he was so light when they pulled him into the boat because both his legs were amputated. Now I know bull sharks are pretty damn strong, but for me it had, would have to be like a great white that could have that kind of power to bite both of your legs off like that. And then also Charles Bruder, when they pulled him on the boat said to them, it was a big gray fella. It was a big, and that's what they say. It was a big gray fella that attacked me, a big gray fella. Now, when it went up the – days later, when it went up the creek, it was seen by a, a captain. And he was going up and down the town trying to explain tell everybody, and they didn't believe him. But <clears throat> what happened is when it attacked – it first went through and almost attacked these one kids. They got out of the water. Mm-hmm. But then when it went down and attacked poor Lester oh, Stillwell. Poor old Lester Stillwell. Poor Lester Stillwell. Make me sad again. Oh, man. And so then he gets attacked. The kids see it happen. But the kids say – the kids that saw that attack him said when that attacked him and rolled over 
It was gray, dark, dark gray, which could be a bull shark. But when it rolled over, they said it was belly was white, completely white. And they, it was on more than one occasion that people said that. Uh-huh. Now, they don't like <coughs> bull sharks don't really have white bellies uh-huh. like that, uh-huh. you know. So one of the theories has been over these years, and it's also kind of come up by the guy who wrote the book, that they think yeah, either it's a bull shark, which to me, I kind of lean that way. Yeah. But then again, like a real big the evidence. One, maybe. So it attacks Lester, the gentleman that comes down to try to save him. They're looking around for him. He finally finds him. Well, the shark comes back again and attacks that gentleman because he's pulling Lester. And then they're fighting the shark again. That shark leaves from there, Timo, swims down the canal again and attacks two more, or another ch- kid. Now, how many. We know sharks pretty well. Tell me, you and I, we've watched enough on that. We don't hear about this. This sh- Whatever shark it was, I still believe it was the same damn shark. So that shark attacks all these people in, within hours of each other. They found poor Lester Stillwell later. And I didn't even know this. They found him later, like way away. And that shark had been coming back and feeding on him. And then coming back and feeding on him and leaving and coming back. This shark was bizarro. This shark was a serial killer. It yeah. was a killer. It was... It didn't care. It was going after everything and everybody. That's what makes me think it was so vicious. And it wasn't maybe a great white, but bull sharks are very vicious. Yeah. Too. They're very they're aggressive. Eaters, yeah. Very aggressive. Yeah. And aren't but, they actually uh, more aggressive than whites, though? I mean, aren't like yeah, bull times, sharks yes. like the yeah. bully of the very shark aggressive. world? Yes. Yeah. And then, like, the so, jerks. yeah. So the other thing that made me think it was a great white is uh, the gentleman that found they that got the shark, they were out at the ending of Matawan Creek and at the mouth of Matawan Creek, they weren't even looking for the shark and the shark bumped into their boat, got caught in their uh, net. And they said, this shark was just, it was crazy. And the gentleman who beat the shark over the head and killed it was this guy. And he had been a lion tamer. He'd been all these things. So he wasn't really afraid, but he said the shark was, he said the shark was just insane. And it would attack the boat first. And then, you know, and then it pulled him backwards, just like in jaws, it pulled the boat backwards. Like, and all these things, in this show that led up to Jaws so, are in there. Like, it's funny, but so wait, so they, they killed beat the shark. shark I don't remember yes. that. Yes. They now, beat this shark. To why death, have I, and why did I not remember that? Why do I not yeah. remember that they killed the shark? Yeah. So if they killed the shark, they should know what it yes. is. Right. So this gentleman also was a taxidermist. So they beat that thing and took it. And supposedly they opened it up just like in Jaws, opened it up and they found bones and human remains in this shark. And basically what it was, it was a, about a 12 foot baby great white and they had pictures of it too because this guy put it up in his wherever his shop or whatever was and 30,000 people came to see that thing 30,000 people came to see it now it didn't survive after that no one knows what happened to it but supposedly that was it and so I don't know I don't remember them I only remember the attacks I remember Lester Stillwell I know that the shark attacked and they were having issues like what was it? How far upstream, mm-hmm. up river was it? It went too? quite. Far. I'm trying to think how far Matawan was. It was like 15 was. miles or something. Yeah, or? it was quite a ways up there. Yeah, and then um, like I said, it attacked Lester, the other gentleman. Yeah, it actually attacked three people that day. Like, and still was eating Lester. Like, I mean, and but leaving Lester and going and eating more. Like, that, that sounds thing, like a couple. Whatever of them it made, was, but I don't know. Yeah, whatever it was, or yeah, or a couple of them was was either pissed off or, and I believe in that. There, there's bad people out there. We have serial killers out here. Mm-hmm. I still think in the animal world, you have that as well. That sure, some you are just asshole dogs and everything yeah, else. Yeah, they're just mm-hmm. much more aggressive and they don't care. They're going to attack first mm-hmm. and then that's it. Mm-hmm. But it was an interesting one, buddy. I, I always loved the story. I don't say, I just said love it, but oh, I've been fascinated yeah. from the time I was a kid. I was actually in New Jersey at pretty much the spot where um, Charles Bruder was attacked, mm-hmm. uh, not far from there, and I and I remember when I was there thinking about that, you know, and stuff. But uh, yeah, um, I would love to see a movie made about that at some point. Who knows if it'll ever be? Have made. you and, seen the you know, movie I'm talking about, The Twelve Days uh, yeah. of Terror? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not yeah, that great, yeah. but it's it's no. it's like a it's like kind of a dry movie trying to tell yes. the story in an entertaining way, but still trying to yeah. tell the. Real story to the point where I think it, ch- it ch- yeah. chokes it a little bit, chokes the a little bit, yeah, the the pizzazz that it could be there. But I know what you're yeah. saying you'd rather see something that was a little uh, emphasis on the sizzle. 
You, yeah, you've got yeah. the steak. You've got plenty of the steak. You want to see it in like a, a little, little bit of the yeah. Because these I'm are people have to look like at this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these are people that didn't know what was going on. Like when they pulled Charles Bruder, the second victim, out with his mm-hmm. legs chopped off. They came up. He died in the boat on the way back to shore. They, they, they were the doctors and medical people were tending to the women who had fainted or were thrown because he's gone. They're not going to save him. They were because everybody was in shock around yeah. there like they've never seen anything like that you know and but it to me it was so funny timo is the dumb ass scientists that think they know so and we know you and i talk about this all the time mm-hmm. what they know and it's like the stuff that they thought back then which was which was gospel this is how it is just oh, like you're so yep, yep mm-hmm. you're so wrong and that's mm-hmm. why I still believe in Bigfoot and things like that. Well, that's the thing, too. It's not that Harley and I are ever, yeah. for the audience, not that Harley and I are ever yeah. saying that scientists are stupid. We're just saying that, that we yeah. reserve the right for them to be to be wrong. And they don't yeah, reserve that right. They're, they're like times. doctors. No. Yes. yes. So so they they, reserve, they don't reserve that right because, you know, they, they got it all figured out. They're, they're, yeah, they're, 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 yeah. They do what they do in order so that you know they're the smartest guy in the room. Yes, so that's yeah. a pretty that's a pretty arrogant. There you go, pretty arrogant yep. thing. But interesting. Well, I tell you what, you we both have assignments. I'm gonna yeah. go. I wrote it down. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna watch the real story of Jaws, and then you're gonna go get the Travel Channel app. Yeah, and then yeah, and then get, get on going. Expedition Bigfoot, and then see what you All think, right. and I'll see what I think about this. And I'm telling you right now, I think Expedition Bigfoot should be a show like I think you watch because these are like two hour shows, yeah. right? So I yeah. think you should. have yeah. I think that's that's what that's that should have been. And so we'll see. We'll see what I think about this, and we'll see what you think. About okay. that. Well, let's get to our official film, Mr. Ben Harley, so yeah. we can get out of here and get the rest of the week going. And uh, let's see here. This week, from 1990, we have the Dolph Lundgren film, or vehicle. Yeah. Vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> I Come in Peace, or <laughs> yeah. Dark Angel. Now, let me let me explain what? that real quick. Yeah, you, you okay, got so, to help me on that one. When it was a script, when the movie was starting its genesis, yeah. it was called Lethal Contact. Okay. And then as they were making the film, and I think as they f- released it internationally, uh, originally it was called Dark Angel. By the okay. time it got to our eyepieces, by the time yes. we saw this movie, they had changed the title to I Come in Peace, which is one of the best titles yeah. in cinema history, if you ask yeah. me. I think it's an incredible yeah. title. And the fact that uh, I got the Blu-ray of this and a DVD... Yeah. And it's both under the title Dark Angel. I don't know why they don't do the I, don't, I Come in Peace because yeah. it's such a better title. And that's how most I of us saw it. I don't Dark and, Angel even makes sense to that movie. And it doesn't. Do you? It actually, no, not at all. And that's the thing. So I Come in Peace to me is what I saw. It. It's what it played, yeah. I think, on cable under probably what, yeah, how you I saw, saw it. I saw the theater. You I saw, saw the right. theater. Yeah, okay. under that. Well, yeah. that's and I don't. That's tell weird. You. Yep. So yeah. let me get out movie guy real quick here and give you a short storyline here for... I come, I come in, in peace. peace or dark yeah. angel. We're going to call it. I come in peace. So yeah, yeah, yeah we're, I, we're cool kids. That's right. <laughs> that's we we're hip. Do, so. Here we go. Here's the movie guy. Uh, a renegade cop is forced to work with an FBI agent in order to bring down a group of drug dealers with sinister plans. That's not it. A renegade yeah. cop is actually forced to work with an H- uh, FBI agent in order to bring down an alien who is a drug group, yeah. a drug dealer, yeah. and has citizen uh, has sinister plans. There is another group of, of criminals. It's a subplot yes. that killed Dolph Lundgren's partner. Yeah. That's kind of where yeah. this thing all kind of starts. Operation. Yes. Yeah, like the a sting operation. Yeah, like a little sting operation. Yeah, yeah. his partner is undercover. And then uh, actually Sherman Howard, who you may know better as Bub from Day of the Dead. Yeah. Yeah. Is the uh, is the bad guy in that situation there? Oh and, yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, so so he kills his partner, and then he's kind of off. But he gets sidetracked because really, what's going on is there is this alien who kills people and then sucks out their life juices yeah. in order to make his own version of drugs. Like yeah, so he has to sh- steal heroin to mm-hmm. knock the people up with heroin, and then yeah, steal their right. There you go. Yep, something that's their it. brain. Yep, yeah. Yep. yeah. So he basically has to get people high. And then take their shit out of him, which will get him and his friends yeah. more high. It's more another. High. It's a. It's a drug dealer from space. Yeah, that's exactly. exactly. And then so there is another alien that's kind of after him. Yeah. And then Dolph Lundgren and his brilliantly cast <laughs> sidekick Brian Benben. Uh, what was he in too? What was on? it? Um, 
Dream on. Yep. I and was then like, he also had the Brian Ben Ben <laughs> show for a little while, but Dream on is what yeah. he's known for. Dream on was okay. Yeah. I remember it. it was an all right show. Yeah. Well, he was also on radio. He was a star of Radio Land Murders. He had a little a little yeah. stint yeah. there. He's he's a funny guy. He's a good actor. He's yeah. as a matter of fact, he he is uh one of the A pluses in this movie. Like he yeah, he, yeah. he 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 actually he carries made Wendy laugh when we were watching it. She chuckled a few times because mm-hmm. of him. He carries the film. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Now Dolph Lundgren, Dolph's not too bad in it. He's, he's not, not he's, but he's uneven. Some parts he is. He's yeah, very exactly. uneven, so, and this is why yeah. I think it's because. Now, stop me if I'm wrong or if you got this, because I even looked yeah. into this and I couldn't find anything, but I'm just going off of my memory, my superhuman yeah. movie memory <laughs> yeah. that I have and knowledge. Punisher. That <laughs> I think his his performance is that uneven due to the fact that he was losing his accent. Now, okay, some guys sure. like yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger, they never wanted to lose their accent because that's who they were. But right, you get somebody sure. else like Mel Gibson, who's Australian, who yeah. has lost his accent on purpose. He he worked sure. it out, and and clearly Dolph Lundgren has done the same. Because if you talk, yeah. if you see the interviews with him now, he sounds like he's from L.A. or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that's part of it because it's really the voice inflections that seem yeah. to go all over the place. Some of it looks like they're over their voiceovers and all that. Because he's Swedish, okay? Swedish yes. people do not have an L.A. accent. Well, Mm-mm. I did mention Matisse Hughes. Uh, yeah, now he plays the too. evil alien. Uh, yes. six foot five made of pure muscle, big, big, monster, yeah. big monster guy. Yeah. Big yeah. Viking looking fella. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I have, I have seen interviews where Dolph Lundgren said he actually appreciated having Matisse on the set because he was oh, used to being the big guy in the set. Matisse yeah. comes on set like, well, at least someone's bigger than me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so basically it's, we, it's a buddy cop movie. And yeah. it's almost like I wouldn't call it like a Beverly Hills Cop or what was the other one? What was uh, Forty Eight Hours? Forty Eight Hours. It's yep. sort yep. of like a Forty Eight Hours or Beverly Hills Cop with an alien, yes. with a little Terminator thrown in, a little alien yeah. Terminator thrown in. Um, the director was Craig R. Baxley of this film, who did okay. uh, who did Stone Cold, The Boss. Oh yeah, boss. Uh, she liked that. Movie. Uh, he also did. <laughs> I don't know why, but well, he also did Action Jackson. Believe it or not. So okay. he yeah. himself uh, is a stunt person. Uh, his whole family, I believe, were stunt. Were really involved with ho- with filmmaking, especially stunts. I think okay. their specialty was stunts. Uh, he's also he also worked on the Warriors and Predator. Craig Ooh, R. Baxley okay. did. So this guy's been around. He knew how to move, make a movie. And the the yeah. main point, not point, but the thing that people would would talk about this movie about is that for as little money as they had to make it. Yeah. Boy, did they make it so slick. Yes. It was it cost 7 million dollars to make. Okay. And it looks like it's 20 million dollar film. It does yeah. look it yeah. looks like it's, it's more than 7 million dollars. Yeah, and, it looks like a lot of those films that came out around that time. Yes. Uh, and, the action films. Right. And that yeah. could be attested yeah. by basically it's being made by a bunch of stuntmen and people who knew yeah. how to do explosions and things cuz that yeah. shit was those explosions were right behind them when they were running and stuff. That was oh, all yeah. Some real of that stuff, stuff was yeah. super close. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. so that's a little starter there. Now you said that you uh, you saw this in a theater. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, oh, real quick, I want to mention too. Interesting. Yeah. Interestingly enough, this was filmed in Houston, Texas. Oh, really? Yeah. So at first, I was, I was like, trying to figure out where it was. I couldn't really place it. I was right. Like, eh, well, Angie you know, was too, and I was like, "Well, it's probably L.A." And then she's like, "Well, it's certainly yeah. not New York." I'm like, "No, I didn't make a lot of movies in New York at that time." No. And then I looked it up. I was like, "Oh, wow, Houston, Texas. Houston, yeah. Houston, Texas. Wow." So again, uh, you said you saw this in a theater, which I yes, that, that's impressive. That's good. I saw this yeah, on Showtime or Cinemax or something like that when it when it aired. But I also saw it yeah. under the title "I Come in Peace." So did it hold up for you coming back to it? Or what did you think uh, of it then and now? Well, you know, it's funny, Tim, I haven't seen this in a long time. And um, uh, it was weird when you told me or you, you know, or when we were picking out movies, you know, the title, I was like, wait. And then you had it written as, you know, below it, I come in peace. And I was like, this just doesn't seem right. Like, that just blew my mind. I didn't because mm-hmm. I kind of always thought this was a bigger movie in my head. Maybe it was than, mm-hmm. than it ended up being. But then I thought about it. I was like, you know what? 
I don't really remember this playing around a lot, no. especially in the last so many years. You don't, you know, and mm-hmm. so going into it, I was a little bit more excited thinking, well, maybe I did witness something back then. And I have over the years with mm-hmm. movies, but I was thinking, well, maybe this was a little bit more important to my movie days than I remember, you know, or, mm-hmm. or knew about, I guess. Right. But uh, it actually, I can't say when I, when I first saw it that I actually loved it. I thought it was the greatest thing, but I enjoyed it when I saw mm-hmm. it. I thought, um, I liked the characters. I, I've always liked Dolph Lundgren. He's not my favorite by any means, but mm-hmm. I like him. He's menacing when he's a bad guy. He's he commands the screen. He's a big dude, and um, but uh, but, but he, he especially in 1990, you weren't sure about him a big, carrying yeah. a film. You weren't right, and exactly. so I think yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to speak for you for a second to kind of tie yeah. it up. But I think because I had the same feeling when I watched, I was like, that's a lot better than it could have been, and I'm yes. surprised I actually enjoyed it as much as I did for it being a Dolph Lundgren. Yes. Film. He wasn't even a Steven Seagal. He was either a bad no. guy in a big movie or a yes. good guy in a real little movie like this. Yeah. But again, I still think Brian Ben Ben is what is what pulls the film together. Yeah. Because at first, on. when he yeah. showed up, I was like, "Oh man, you know, and this is to, this is one thing I didn't remember him, mm-hmm. and I also didn't remember the other alien because there's another alien like a a cop or bounty hunter. Yes. That is chasing. Uh, old handsome. Yeah, he's old, a good uh, guy who's after. <laughs> yeah. He's the good alien that's after. Yes, that is after the bad alien. Yeah, yeah that's taking yeah. the the drugs. So it's making the drugs. Yeah, yes. yeah. And um, so I'd forgotten about those two two parts. Um, there are a few parts from the movie that stuck in my mind, um, but uh, I will say this: going back and watching it, actually, I enjoyed it. I think more now than I did then. Mm-hmm. Um, I was happy. I was like, "This isn't so bad," and I don't remember. And and I've always liked that. I come in peace, and you'll but you leave in pieces. Mm-hmm. I was like, that to me has always been kind of funny. Now, mm-hmm. is it Shakespeare? No, but I like it. I'll always remember it, and even if I never saw this movie ever again. I'll always remember those lines. Mm-hmm. Um, but I actually kind of enjoyed this movie a little bit, and I watched it with Wendy. And Wendy's from the 80s. She was born in like 86. So <laughs> uh-huh. she doesn't really, you know what I mean? Like, so, um, and I feel for her sometimes because like, I'm proud of myself, Tim, because I sometimes I get her to watch things. But I'm proud of myself because I got her to watch. She watched this with me yesterday. Uh-huh. And she also watched John Adams, which was a seven part, about eight hours worth of stuff about the American Revolution. You have to be tough to like that stuff. Yeah. You don't, you know. You might get a chance flirting with you watching that, but yeah. I, I can understand you being yeah. impressed. And I yeah. was excited. So going into this and, and, and watching her reaction to some of this was fun for me. I'm like, you know, this isn't as bad of a movie as I kind of remember. And I don't remember it as a bad movie. Mm-hmm. I just remember it being, eh, it's, it's a popcorn right. it's movie. There. It's yeah, just exactly. a little inter- piece of entertaining celluloid. That's all it is. Yeah. It's exactly. not trying to be anymore. Yeah. No. Mm-mm. And I really think that I actually enjoyed this movie way more than I think I was going to, uh-huh. you know? Um, and there are some things, there's a couple things that took me out of it that they could have changed, but that's just me just, you know, st- like visually things. But um, these, I like the guns in this movie were like, they were like um, Uzis on steroids mm-hmm. and the sound of them even like, <clears throat> like yeah. and I kind of forgot about that, how cool that was. But overall, Tim, I think this was a – I was pleasantly surprised at mm-hmm. how good a movie this is. And I'm also a little mad that – I shouldn't be mad, but I feel like this movie is better than about 50% of the ones that people really love and you see all the time. I think mm-hmm. this is just as good, if not better, than some of those. Yeah. And and it makes me – it it hurts my heart a little because there's lots more movies like this out there that have been shit-canned or things haven't happened for – and it kind of sucks because this is a pretty good little movie. It yeah. really is. It's your standard eighties movie. Good cop, you know, cop buddy thing. Yeah, you, that's you, what I was saying. It's a the, total yeah. cookie cutter, yeah. cookie yeah. cutter actioner from that period. Oh. It's, it's it's. And a, I kept it, telling Wendy yeah. these things. I was like, yeah, watch this. This is what's going to happen next. Yeah. Okay, they're going to run into it. Their, their, their chief of police is going to chew his ass mm-hmm. a couple times in this movie. And sure enough, <laughs> you know, right. like, you know what I mean? Just. Simple. But I thought it was kind of funny, too, how Brian Benman's yeah. character, like, came in and looked at Dolph Lundgren and said, yeah. okay, well, we're not going to do this. We're not. He went through every movie cliche. And yeah. then he said, we're not going to do that. And then that's exactly pretty much what they did. <laughs> they did the yeah. every cliche anyway. But what's cool about it is that it, this movie is a self-aware movie. 
And I think that sometimes, like, I think people, like, when they can't articulate, like, maybe you're having a hard time articulating, like, why do I like this more than other things that look just like it? Because I think yeah. those movies weren't as self-aware. They were self-righteous or self-important. This movie is very sure. self-aware. It doesn't, yes. it doesn't, like, preach to you about drugs because it's about that. It takes yeah. a trope from that era, which was drug dealers, sure. and, makes, and makes them into space aliens. Yeah. And then it, yeah. and then is and not only that, but then it takes the, it takes the the Earthling drug dealer guys or whatever, and pretty much just makes you know waste with them. They're gone, yes. you know. Yeah. Forget that because mm-hmm. here's an alien drug dealer, and not only yeah. is it not only is he stealing the heroin or whatever, but he's jacking people up with it in order to get their mm-hmm. juices while they're jacked up to get more and more jacked up, you know. So yeah, it was almost a, a, it's it's almost absurdist. In yes. a way, and yeah. and and I think that it works for it because it's played with a straight face. Mm-hmm. It really is played with a straight face. I mean, I, I personally, how Dolph Lundgren pulled that off, it, it to me was pretty impressive because I don't think I've yeah. really seen him do it before or since. And I think that this is one of those movies that, like you're saying, not a lot of people see. Mm-mm. They just don't no. see it. I think the title is a huge part of that. I think had they just left it as I come in peace, I don't yeah. know why. I don't know why they. They don't do that. I, I have don't no either. idea. I, I yeah. because, but there was some people on this. Like one of the writers was was David Kep, or Cope, or whatever. Okay, I mean, yeah. he's he's been around. Yeah. I mean, stuff like oh, I don't know, Jurassic Park, yeah, Mission Impossible, <laughs> yeah. Death Becomes Her. So there were there were some people who knew what they were doing on this. I think that what's this is a good example. I think from what I'm smelling when I'm reading the tea yeah. leaves is we had some. Hollywood people here, these stunt guys or, you know, effects, yeah. stunt, explosion guys, whatever. I mean, that's kind of what these people were kind of known for. Sure. And they, yeah. they kind of called in some favors to some friends. The, the, the very first guy in the car who's driving, you probably recognized him, Jesse Vint. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. been just about in everything. I remember him from uh, Forbidden World, which was, okay, a, yeah. I mean, but he's been <laughs> yeah. in a lot of stuff, a lot of television, a lot of movies. I mean, he, it's basically a cameo he's in, just basically throwing a CD player. CD yeah. and the CD player in his car, but pretty much everybody, Michael J. Pollard. Yep. Michael yep. J. Pollard has boner. Piece of boner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, but just these little uh, tidbits, these character actors that are in this film that giving it a, just a touch of weight, just a touch mm-hmm. of credibility. And that what they did is they kept that moving the whole movie. There's just a touch of credibility and everything. Brian Ben Ben to me, that's what he's doing. Every scene he's in, he's putting a touch of, Credible comedic acting, sure. And he's yeah. he found a good, he found a good um, give and take between being the the annoying dickhole and being yeah. like redeemed a little bit. I mean, I, yes. I mean, it was, there was funny parts, and they kind of made fun of him being small because him and Dolph Lundgren couldn't be too opposite. Oh God, no. Yeah. You know, like when he when he asks if he had a when he when he's trying to get all tough and he asked Dolph Lundgren if he has a jacket for him and he puts it on. He goes, oh. <laughs> He goes, that actually fits. It's like it ought to be. It was mine when I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> There's right. just a lot of stuff like that. But I, I think that what's nice about this movie is if you get a bunch of people together and they have a load of fun making a movie, but they play it straight in front of the camera, that's yeah. when you either have one of two things, a really fun, bad, cheesy B movie, or you have just a surprisingly entertaining popcorn film, which I think this is. It's not super yeah, cheesy. It's not. It, it's it's right next to cheese. You can yeah, see I the did. cheese yeah. there. <laughs> and yeah, I think this is sure. a well constructed uh, um, formula film. It was just yeah. done with a little bit of money. So I think what's surprising is that you haven't seen it. Now, me and you right. have yeah. seen it, but yes. a lot of yeah. people haven't. And I think if they did see this, they'd be like, "Huh? Well, this is entertaining." Yeah. And you gotta remember the Terminator was a low budget movie too. It was. And, and this if you looks, look at it, it back, it's not that yeah, the productions are a little cheesy. Actually. Yeah, and this actually really. looks a little better, I think. You know, I mean mm-hmm. so yeah. and it is a few years later. Also, you know, so so I mean sometimes your technology gets a little bit better and things sure. dip in price where you can afford things. Like CG yeah. did, stuff like that, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I just, I really, I'm kind of in with you. Now, the one issue I do have with it is that it, it I, to me, it drags for about the last 10 minutes or so. The yeah, fight between Dolph Lundgren and Matisse Hughes, you couldn't do it because they established early on that no matter how tough Dolph Lundgren is, Matisse Hughes is an alien and he has toss him around. superhuman strength. I mean, he has yeah. like way more strength than 
then no matter how tough you are, like Predator yes. versus Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, the fight at the end was a bit painful because it was a lot of this little – Matisse Hughes had this little – it was like a needle, but it looked like the Spider-Man yeah. thing that would come off his wrists. Yes. Okay, yeah. so he basically do, do the Spider-Man thing, and this little needle thing on a string would fly out and, like, jack itself into you. And, and like – Dolph Lundgren catches this thing before it pierces his skin, and they spend a <laughs> yeah. really uncomfortable amount of time. That him, was way too yeah long. wrestling yeah. around, and with dragging this. them back, and yeah, yeah. I, I agree that was yeah. that was painful for me right. to watch. It, it was almost it was. like they were trying to make a more competitive cliffhangery kind of fight at the end. They didn't know what else to do yeah. it, and that's how right. they did it. Now that I I, I could have done without that. That that was a little. Sure. They could have just ended it. It didn't need anything more. They no. could have just ended no. it. But Brian Benman plays a whole movie. You want to like him really bad, but he, he as soon as you start liking him a lot, he starts doing something that makes you not like him again. Yeah. And those mm-hmm. kind of characters are fun in movies as long as they end up on the right side. They're fun in sure. movies, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I to me it was exactly what I remembered it. I remembered it being better than I thought it was going to be and being entertaining. Yeah. Again, what is the what I'm gonna ask, I can keep asking this. What is a cardinal <laughs> sin of B movies? Boring. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And this is not boring. <laughs> yeah. And I even told Angie because no. we were going to watch this. She looked a little tired. She had to get up early this morning, go to work a little early. And I said, "Hey, here's the good news. This one will not put you to sleep." Yes. And it did not. Yeah. Did not put her to sleep. No. It didn't. It's slick enough. I, I I tell you though, Tim, I, I I enjoyed this much more than I thought I was going yeah. to. I knew I was going to go into and like it because I I remember it, you right. know, and I wanted to see it again. Right. Held up better but than I actually, you thought it would, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I was a little much more pleasantly surprised. Right. Let's put it that way. I, so. I, I'll agree with that. It probably I don't think it held up better than I thought it would. It held yeah. up as good as I thought it was going to, and that was pretty good because yeah. I was set up for a disappointment. I didn't get that. Now, did I did I stare at the TV the whole time? No, I got up, went to the bathroom, right. did some stuff. You know, I've seen it before. Like you've seen it before, yeah. so I knew what was yeah. going on, and I knew that I knew it was one of those like, kind of movies where you could get up, you could look over at your wife or girlfriend yeah. or friend and, and make a comment and talk for a minute and not really yeah. miss much of anything. You know, right. Uh, right. I, I thought the CD that are the the disc the discs they had in the movie, the weapons the aliens had that were magnetized yeah. were a nice little yeah. a nice and, little touch. You know, and, they and were I was neat. trying to explain that yeah. to Wendy too. You had to understand that time period cds were a big deal yeah coming out yeah it was a big deal man like and 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 so like that they were still kind of new and we you know like Mm -hmm. and i remember even when that guy put at the beginning yeah put that in the cd i was like "Ooh, nice stereo bro yeah that was showing he had some money because that's what i was telling you i said well i go no there were cds in the 80s i said it just you know they were they were a little more expensive and stuff but they had them because i remember like Mm -hmm. even yep like 86 I'm talking about talking to people about yeah. their CDs and stuff like that. But at the same time, I think what they were showing in that movie was that the guy actually had one in his car, man, that played. Mm-hmm. And that didn't, that doesn't seem like anything to someone five years later. Yeah. But at yep. that point it was a sign. This guy had some money. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to give this movie a great bape up. Just a regular, not even a big one around, but it's just a regular great bape up. But the, the thing is this, is that it is a triumphant film and that it's basically just a B act programmed action movie from yep. 1990 made for very little money but it's a it's a it's a triumph because what they did with very little stands up today. Yeah. It stands up today yep. and I I think that, that that's a triumph. It's just now if I'm just looking at it from a normal point of view, it's a decent yeah. movie. It's an okay sure. movie. It's a decent movie. So therefore for me uh great Ape up. I Yes. I, me too. I, you you me almost want to not like it. Yeah, in a way like I will say Brian Ben Ben threw me for a minute at first. I didn't like him at much at first, mm-hmm. but then I started to grow. You know, he started, it was only because I'm like, oh God, I forgot because this guy went on to a comedic career, and, mm-hmm. you know, so it kind of threw me. And plus, their size difference, and mm-hmm. but it ended up being really good. Mm-hmm. It ended up being I liked him. Um, you know, uh, he kind of it was probably the way he would stick up to. For himself, to yeah. Dolph Lundgren, and you're almost like, yeah. <laughs> this guy's gonna break you in half for <laughs> yeah. real. Yeah, well, that's what was fun really? about his character, yeah. though. He had the Napoleonic complex. I mean, you know, yes, so that, exactly. that was, I make more yeah. money than you. I bet I, you know. Yeah, yeah, and then when he co- shows up to Dolph's yeah. apartment, and realizes he's actually like, a cultured oh. person. You yeah, know, like, exactly. that, that was pretty oh, yeah, funny well. too. So, I mean, yeah, it, it, and those things are all tropes of these movies. Yes. They're all, but you were surprised because sometimes these B movies that were imitating bigger movies, yeah, didn't accomplish those tropes well. 
to the point where right. it stuck out. You're like, oh, they're just sticking that in there because everyone else does it. No, this felt sure. like it was natural. This felt like this is what it was. So again, um, yeah, uh, yeah, so great bait. What are you gonna do? Great yeah, bait. Uh, great bait, up, buddy. Yeah, okay. not not to the rafters, but no. pretty close because mm. I'm um, I am super um, impressed that I did not come into this going or not going into it. I mean, come out of it like bitching mm-hmm. because I, I, you know, Tim, I and I hate this because I'm an '80s kid. Well, I'm a '70s kid, but I'm an '80s teenager. You know yeah. what I mean? Yep. And a lot of my favorite things are from the 80s. But sometimes when I go back and watch some of these 80s ones that I thought were great, and I'm like, oh, God, it's bad. Yeah. This one didn't. This one was like, you know what? This is pretty good. And I liked Dolph Lundgren. Well, two great babes up. Yes, it's su- sort of surprisingly, maybe to you people, not to me and Ben, yeah. I've seen this before, but I'm, I was not surprised. I was pleasantly impressed that it yeah. are presently – Oh, pleasantly confirmed. Let's put it that way. That it go. held up. It held up okay. Yeah. Not not too yeah. not too bad. And it not was not too shabby. A little piece of entertainment that did, didn't yeah. hurt my night. It was okay. So it doesn't over a little long, but it's only ninety minutes. It just feels a little long last ten minutes because of the they're trying. Sure. They were trying to make it a little bit more than it needed to be. But that was really my only criticism of the film. So anyway, yeah. well, two great apes up for I Come in Peace, otherwise known as Dark Angel. Okay, well, you don't know what we're doing pieces. next week, Mr. Ben Harley, but to all you deep thinkers yeah. out there, we promise we'll try our best to make it better as always. So yes, sir. until next week, stay spooky, and we'll talk to you then. Keep it creepy, people. You've been listening to the Tim Owen Harley Show, brought to you by ScreenPrintingFactory.com your affordable one-stop solution to all your screen printing needs.